Hi, my name is Carolyn Adams. I've been a Salesforce consultant for about seven years. Um, here at Simplis, I write uh, scopes of work as a solution architect. And um, today, our question for the Ask Simplis show is, can you explain the forecasting module in Salesforce and how it works? So forecasting within Salesforce is a feature um, that you get out of the box. You just have to turn it on and enable it. And basically, uh, like the name implies, you are able to forecast your revenue plan and predict your sell cycles. So um, you can do forecasting in a few different ways. Um, you can actually have up to four forecasting types on collaborative forecasting, which is the default that you get uh, on newer editions for the last few years. With forecasting, um, basically you go into your opportunity stages and you assign each stage to a forecast category, which would be pipeline, best case, or commit, and then of course you've got closed one. So rather than having, let's say, eight or ten different stages that you're trying to track, you really narrow it down to three different buckets. So typically, but everyone does it a little different, a uh, pipeline would be, let's say, everything 50% or below in the forecast and then best case would be 51 to 75 and commit would be everything above that up to 99 percent so then when you go to the forecasting module um, all it really does is take the sum of all your opportunities and their revenue and put it into one of those buckets now you can actually let your salespeople, if you want override forecast categories so even though they have one that's in an entry level stage they know it's still going to come in. They've had a verbal commit, but they're still trying to get the paperwork together. For example, they could bump that up to a commit, even though by default it'd be falling to pipeline or best case. So as you look at the forecast tab, um, it easily displays all of the revenue totals in each of those buckets by person and then also by period, which could be monthly or quarterly, and you can even have custom fiscal years if you want. Now, revenue is the most common one, the first one I was explaining. Like I said, you can have up to four types, and other ones would be by units. You can also break it down by product family. So, for example, it's really common to have a different quota and want to track your pipeline for hardware products versus software products. So you could actually do that in the forecast as well. So that's it on a high level. Of course, there's Salesforce help and training that'll explain everything else uh, in the mix there. Again, this is Carolyn Adams with at Simplest Now, hashtag Ask Simplest.